Hey everybody, welcome to a hot summer day in California. It's summertime, the time of county fairs and contests and that type of thing. Now you remember in the episode we did called Tuners? My daughter and I were making a guitar for her to enter into a contest and it was this one. Remember the British themed one? Well, when you enter a contest, especially a handicraft or an arts festival or something like that, they really don't like you hooking up to amps that look like regular amps and uh, they like it if it's handcrafted. Also, if somebody looks at a cigar box guitar and goes, is that a real guitar or is that just a piece of folk art? If you have a short cable and a battery operated amp there, it's real easy for them to turn on the amp, plug it in and strum it and say, oh, that's a real guitar and that really helps. So this episode is about little portable battery operated amps you know them, you can buy them in the store, but this time we're going to take a kit and make our own amp. All right, it's very windy today, and so if you hear a bunch of rattling and noises, it, don't let that bother you. But let's do a quick flyby uh, of this guitar. Um, it's three strings. It's got two pickups. The jack for the coil is right here. The piezo, which is right under the bridge. That's there. We've got the typical ball canning jar lid with the copper tape to ground the strings. The sound holes, the graphics. She's really into England or Britain or whatever you call it. The matchbooks. Uh, this one's kind of funny. It's Union Jack uh, something or other in Speedway, Indiana because Cops is in Speedway. You know what I'm talking about? Hey, Reverend Peyton. Anyway, uh, matchbook some World War II vintage we got the stamp collage the RAF pin let's flip this over we got those chrome tuners we did a bit about uh, tuners that was the last episode where we first saw this guitar and we got a a penny or a pence or whatever they call it in England um, now you wear the crown Check that song out, Shorts by Restaurant out of Long Beach. Uh, there's the postage stamps. And then Larry Krieger was good enough to send us a box of railroad nails. And this one's from 1964, the year that the Beatles hit the United States. So, that's this guitar. Now you'll remember that my daughter built this to enter it into a contest. Uh, we typically do that once a year, whether it's a county fair or whatever it is. And there's nothing better than to be able to take a battery-powered amp and uh, plug it in. So as part of the display, people could actually play this thing. Now, you can go with something like this. This is a nice little practice amp. Uh, they work out pretty well with power cord and all that. I think you can get into one of these for less than uh, $40. Uh, battery operated. Again, you can also plug it in. But typically what we like to do is we like to make our own amp out of, of course, a cigar box. And we've done pretty good at it because, well, yeah, best of division. So our amps are, they work out pretty nice. They're not really loud, but um, they kind of go with the theme of things. Now, since this one is English, we want to do an amp that matches this theme. Now, typically, I like macho boxes. You know that. They're nice and thick. You see how thick this is. Um, but the problem with the Camacho box in this case is um, it's thick. And these kits that these amps uh, are made out of, most of the connections are really thin. So this is one of those times when another box, believe it or not, I'm going to abandon the Camacho box. And this really hurts me because this is a Churchill box and it's English theme. But oh well, moving on. Uh, my daughter picked this one out. Number one, English Claro. And it's a nice little box. It's about the same size as the one I showed you before. But you'll notice that the wood is thick enough where it's not flimsy, but it's thinner. So I won't have to use Forstner bits and things to drill down for the knobs and all that stuff. And that's really hard to do when you're trying to work and attach stuff to the inside of the box. So that's gonna work out better for us. This right here will be our box. Now there's gonna be a graphic on the front. 
there's going to be a graphic on the back. We're going to retain some of these stickers on the side. I'm going to put the handle up here and the controls up here. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the kit I ordered. First, the most important thing is how loud is this thing going to be and what um, options does it have? Well, it's a 5 watt, which is better than some of these small amps. Um, it has a tone control. It has uh, presets that give you uh, reverb and some things like that. It's got a battery hookup. It's got a place for a D DC jack where you're not entirely dependent on a battery. Uh, it's got an LED light, a little light that lights up. It's got, I think I said tone control. It's got a headphone jack. It's got an MP3 jack, which means you can play uh, songs off of your iPod or whatever you want through this thing. And of course, then it's got the input jack on off volume switch. So this thing is all wired up, pre-wired up. And um, the cost of the thing was shipping and everything, $64.94. So with a box, even if you have to pay for the box and a few other parts, you're going to have probably $75 into this thing. Now, when you open the box, you're going to find that your circuit board with your uh, adjustable uh, reverb and, and, and the effects button, you've got an on off and volume switch, but everything is already wired. There's that little red light. Uh, the plug-in for your iPod, the power cord, the input jack where your guitar will hook to. This is a tone control. Uh, uh, this is a headphone jack, uh, so you can play and listen to yourself with headphones on. That's handy if, believe me, if you're when you first get into these, your significant other doesn't kind of like what's coming out of there. And then these two pop right into here, like so. All right, I think I can do this today. Oh, look at that, strike one, okay. You got negative, positive, and you've got a four inch speaker. They give you some screening once you cut the hole in the box. And look, they even give you all the mounting hardware. Now we might not use uh, these knobs and stuff we might go with something else that matches the knobs on our guitar uh, but this thing is ready to work in fact if i plug this battery in right now this will actually work without a box so when you get one of these always make sure that you put the battery on it plug a guitar into it before you waste your time on a box because if something is wrong you won't find that out unless you try it first that's the voice of experience. I've never had a problem with this company. Again, I don't do product endorsements, but if you want to know who made this, send me an email. My email is listed at the end of the episode. Now, even though they give a screen with the kit, what I do is I put one of these on. I get this from another supplier. I think you know somebody that just might uh, sell those. Oh, look at that. Anyway, we put uh one of these in this build so the speaker is protected not only by this mesh but also by this grill now you want to remember that i said i was going to cover up the front and back of the box with a graphic but the sides and the top are going to stay the way they are so i'm going to need to know how to mount some things here and so Again, using a metric ruler, uh, this box is 122 millimeters wide. I found 61 here. And I'm going to mark on the front and back of the box that center line. Again, I pre-measured this here like so. There's 61. Since this is going to be covered, I marked that line. Now... Up on the top, I can see where the center is when I start positioning the control knobs and stuff. And I won't have to mark this up or mar it up. Okay, you're going to hear some stuff in the background now. I've got Sun House Revisited. That's something you can download on the internet. I think you're going to like that. It talks about Sun House. I'm really into Sun House. I think he was the inspiration behind a lot of people we listen to. Anyway, that's what's going on in the background. One more time. 
Sun House Revisit. I'll see if I can give you a link down in the comment section. Anyway, you remember I talked about using this grill? Well, I have to cut a hole in the box, and I love my Forstner bit set, but unfortunately, the biggest Forstner bit I have does not is not going to create the hole in the box that's big enough for this to be mounted uh, the way I want. So, I have a hole saw now kit. Now, you're going to want to be careful with this stuff because this stuff, in comparison to a Forstner bit, is a lot rougher, and you can mess up a thin cigar box pretty quick, but that's what we're going to use to put the hole in the box for the speaker. We're going to use uh, some of the smaller Forstner bits to make the holes that are big enough to go through for the smaller control knobs, just like we do on a cigar box guitar. You'll notice that the speaker is this big, but this is smaller than the speaker. So some of the speaker is going to be hid behind the front of the box. And then what I've done is I've modified one of these just a bit so I can extend this out and use the mounting holes that are going to mount the speaker to the face of the box. Now I've got this going. Again, these things cut really coarse. So I've got the clutch on the drill set kind of low. I don't want to just punch through here and tear everything up. There we go. Nice and clean. I got a little bit of touch up to do there. But this will fit there perfectly. Now I've got this little stone wheel. A quick way to make this to get the bones off here is you just go around like this. And in the event that you need it a little bit bigger, this is also a quick way to go around with this thin, with this thin wood and, and do that handy tool. I want to figure out how to line the speaker up. I know where my center is. The speaker will naturally find its balance here. But since it's going to mount from the back, I need to be able to know where to put these holes because these holes go through. You'll see the bolts here, but you won't see all this. So what I've done is I want to know where the center is and I've made a mark right there. Do you see that? So now I'm going to take my T-square. I'm going to put it on the mark right there like so. Tighten it up. Then when I bring this around to the front of the box, I can just, boom, my speaker will need to go there. I just line this up like so. Center the speaker up. And give myself this mark here and I'll drill four holes there. Now the problem with these thin boxes is when you drill through them, I'm going to go to each one of these marks and drill through. I'm going to drill a pilot hole with this small bit because I'm going to want to come in from the back side of this box a little bit first before I drill my big hole so I don't bug it out. Meaning when I need to bug it out, when you drill and press through with a bigger bit, you're going to end up having a wood splinters all over the place. And yeah, you can hide them in the back and that'll be okay. But I don't like that much. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to come around here. And I'm going to drill a little bit right there on each one first. go then we'll come around to the front and go all the way through take a little sandpaper front and back and there we go once I've got this sanded off a little bit I can take my trusty awl and open them holes up like so and boom. Remember, this is all going to be covered up with graphic, but there we go. All right, now that I've got a couple of these holes drilled, the main ones, it's time to uh, start thinking about cutting out the graphic. So I just lined the graphic up with one edge of the print, a little bit sticking over. And I do this for all sides. All right, there we go. Now I can put this on the top like so. Mod Podge it on, just like we do with any other graphic. We don't worry about the hole. We'll cut that out with a razor knife, but we'll do that front and back. All right, just like usual. 
All right, the Mod Podge is on. I've had to do a little cutouts for these hinges. There we go. I want to press down too hard because I've got a big hole here. Once this uh, settles and dries and then I've got a coat on top, that will firm up enough for this to come in from the back and cut this out, cut this stuff off and make it look good. So we're just going to set that aside now and let it dry. Now we want to remember that this top and the sides, we're going to want to leave those pretty much the way they are. But I need to do some layout up here. So I know where my center point is here and there. So I'm going to put this little piece of tape to line up with that edge right there. Come on, stick tape. And do the same thing in the front. Now, I know that this line right here is the center. Now this is our main circuit board with my switches and I'm going to want it to sit up here on top of the box. So what I want to do is I want to go from the center to the center of these tuning knobs and it's 42 which makes me want to go to 21 up here and put a mark and do the same thing. Remember this is our center line not here or here but this is our center line. So I'm going to measure 21 here and then 21 from here over to here. And that will give me my spot for my holes. Now, I'm going to also put a handle up here. So I want to kind of balance everything out and think this out ahead of time. Now, instead of marking up the box uh, and drawing a line, what I can do is use these little dovetail marks on both sides to figure out where my line is. As long as I lay a straight edge over there, I can come to there and there and then my 21 millimeter mark here and here I'll know exactly where to drill through. There we go. And everything went right. We just flip these over and what do you know they drop right in. Check that out. Perfect. All right I'm going to tear a little bit of that tape off right there. Again I know my center line is here. And I'm going to pop this up through here like so. And what do you know, I can put on the nuts that hold everything on here like so. Okay, that back one will be for the tone control. So we've got on and off and... Uh, some presets that give you some reverb and stuff like that, but we're going to put the tone control now uh, in the back back there. Now there's this little red light emitting diode that tells you when the thing is on and off. It's wired into the uh, on off volume switch. So I'm going to put that right down in there like so. It will stick up through here and it will be protected by uh, these knobs. All right, let's push that up through the hole just enough like so. Turn it on. Ooh, look at that. Now I've got uh, a couple auxiliaries to put back here. I've got a headphone jack plug in. I got an MP3 uh, plug in. Um, and I'm going to come in about so far on each side. You see how I've made a mark there and I lengthen out my carpenter square and if I come straight across here and here I'm going to drill holes there and you want to remember there's going to be a graphic over the back so all this mess will be covered up okay I've got uh, a couple of the auxiliary holes plugged in or cut in up here uh, these are a little tricky because there's not much room on the switches or the jacks themselves and then I've got the 9 volt auxiliary where you can plug this thing in and also uh, the jack uh, for the cable that goes to the guitar or your wireless pickups is here. Now again before I started drilling here I did the layout uh, with uh, a carpenter square knowing where the middle is and then made my marks and drilled up everything and now once all this drilling is done and these holes are in now I can put the back 
graphic on uh, on the front graphic you can see I put the first set of Mod Podge on I punched in the holes that are going to hold the speaker on and, and now after another coat I'm going to go ahead and cut this out okay now I want a handle up here this handle will kind of protect these knobs and everything so what I've done is I've uh, found the center and I've marked uh, where the mounting holes will go from the inside and now I want to make sure that those are squared up on the top of the box. So it was 39 millimeters from the center point. And I've got a hole there and one there. And you can see I've made the marks already. There we go. Perfect. All right, there we go. That handle will become in handy when we're carrying it around, plus it will protect these and the, the knobs. Okay, we got a little, couple little embellishments to put on this thing here and there. No British thing would be good without an RAF pin, so uh, I'll epoxy that on there at the end. All right, all the holes are done in the back, and that means it's time for the graphic there we go we'll let that dry now I want to make this wood pop a little bit and clean it up you remember this uh, homemade stain we did in the episode about the coffee can guitar uh, I took a quarter cup of coffee grounds and boiled them down in a bunch of water and I made some stain and if you put it on here See how it makes that, that wood pop too? Like so, see the difference? Okay, you can see as I go down. This cleans up things really nice. We got still got some trim to do on the uh, on the graphic, but yeah, there we go. How you like that? Alright, we are done. I like the way this is protected. This turned out looking good. The box is just the right size. On the back, we have headphones, an input jack, a 9-volt uh, wall hookup, and, of course, our guitar cord jack. Um, turned out pretty clean. Now, let's see what it does. All right, so this thing's pretty simple. It's got a on switch lets you know when you're eating up your battery if you forget to turn it off um, volumes here of course and then you've got some presets uh, one of them if you just flip it all the way to the right is an A note that will help you tune your guitar we flip this back all the way to the left there's some uh, reverb and distortion presets and then of course a tone control low to high so I'm going to uh, strum this quick and then we'll turn turn uh, to the different settings and see what it sounds like. Turn the guitar up some and so it gets pretty loud. Um, it complements uh, the guitar, goes along with the theme and will create some interest if you're sitting out in the street trying to make some change. Okay, that's it for this episode. Subscribe button in the middle, playlists are on either side. Have all my videos, my videos about things other than cigar box guitars. And don't forget the iCards up there. They give you good music tips. That's what they do. Today's music tip is Mark Porkchop Holder. Look at that picture, isn't that special? Mark pork chop holder. Let's go out with a little taste of that on my little amp here. And I got no pride.